bit of an odd one this week on Battle of the Ports as we take a look at an arcade game that we are not even going to see. Yep, this is Midway's Hydro Thunder that hit the arcades in February 1999. Now the issue is that the arcade version is not emulated, so we can't take a look at it. On the plus side, the arcade game was just a PC running on locked 3DFX and Omega 3D powered graphics drivers. The game was eventually ported over to Windows in 2000, and it basically is the arcade game. The gameplay in Hydro Thunder is similar to Sega's arcade races of the time. It consists of racing high-tech speedboats through treacherous environments from the cold seas of the Arctic Circle to a post-apocalyptic version of New York City. Scattered across the tracks are blue and red boost icons. When touched, these icons allow the player who touched them to boost. Red boost icons are more scarce than blue boost icons because they give more boost fuel. Boost power is not only used to go faster, but also for performing the hydro jump, which is performed by braking and using the boost button. When combined with the many ramps on the tracks, players can reach shortcuts and the boost icons that would otherwise be inaccessible. The tracks in Hydro Thunder, like the boats, are divided into four classes, easy, medium, hard and bonus. The easy tracks are usually short and simple, the hard tracks are dark and difficult to navigate, and the medium tracks fall in the middle. Not all the tracks are available from the start though. By placing first, second or third on the easy tracks, the player unlocks the medium tracks and boats. Hard tracks and boats are unlocked by placing first or second on the medium tracks. Bonus tracks are accessed by placing first on the hard tracks and the bonus boats are then unlocked by placing first on the bonus tracks. Hydro Thunder came to the Dreamcast in December 1999, and what a fantastic port it is! Now it may not look as sharp as the PC version, and it is missing some effects, such as the lens flare, but you have to take into consideration that the Dreamcast was less than a quarter of the price of a PC capable at running this game at arcade quality. The Dreamcast port is fast, smooth and handles really well. It does contain a two player option, but besides that, it's a pretty bare bones port as far as extras go. Still, there was a lot of content in the arcade version and all that is here. A few months after the Dreamcast game came the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 versions, which both saw a release on March 7th, 2000 in the US and later in May across Europe. This is the PlayStation version. Straight away you can tell this is a really bad port. Now to be fair to Blue Shift, who made the port, they have tried to keep everything from the arcade game here on the PlayStation version, but my god, is it choppy as hell. At the highest point, this port runs at 30 frames per second, but in most cases it's running at 24 frames per second and often dips to 20 or 19 frames per second. This frame rate also causes big issues for the handling. The game feels very unresponsive and the collision detection can be quite questionable at times. But you know, I'm not surprised this runs like crap. From booting up the game, everything looks cheap. From the obviously digitized title screen with off colors, to the digitized mushy looking main select screen. Oh, and let's not forget the lack of any title music or introduction. Yep, 
This may be a late generation PlayStation release, but it still sucks big time. The Nintendo 64 version allows up to 4 players local multiplayer instead of just 2 players, when the Nintendo 64 expansion pack is present, and it also tries so hard to be just like the arcade version, but sadly, the N64 just can't cope. As to be expected, the resolution is low, with horribly blurry textures, but what really drags this port down is the sluggish speed. The game handles well enough, but there is a severe lack of speed and it also slows down, making the game even slower at times. Audio is an issue too. The music is in mono, has very low bitrate, and also very quiet. This coupled with the slow action really does make the Nintendo 64 game feel rather lost. Still, at least it runs at a higher frame rate than the PlayStation game. Hydro Thunder also saw a release on the GameCube as part of Midway Arcade Collection 3. This port seems to be based upon the Dreamcast version more than the arcade, but isn't as good as the Dreamcast game. The graphics, while nice enough, lack the clarity of the Dreamcast version. The textures are lower in resolution and the AA looks worse. The controls have also been changed slightly, with the boats now feeling a little more twitchy. It's not a bad thing per se, but you will need to get used to it. finish off with the PlayStation 2 version, which is also on the Midway Arcades Collection 3. Yes, I do know there is an Xbox version too, but I don't own an original Xbox, only a 360 and Series X. Surprisingly, the PlayStation 2 version is better than the GameCube release. I never would have thought that. The textures are sharper, making for a cleaner look port overall. The controls are still a little twitchy though, but like I said in the GameCube section, you'll soon get used to them. Side by side. 